Hi, my name is Nikki. I'm the obsessive bookseller and welcome to my channel. Today we are starting part one of seven of my unread section for the Sunday Shelfie series. If you're new to this series, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. But basically, I wanted to give you a tour of my collection, but I didn't want it to be like a five hour long video. So I'm breaking it down into sections and bringing you a video once per week. For my red collection, they were in alphabetical order by author's last name. For this unread section, they are shelved by priority, and so from an outsider looking in, there is no rhyme or reason. A lot of these books are ones that I've been hanging on to for ages. Some of them don't even have covers. There's an interesting perk that comes along with being a bookseller, and you get to take a lot of what they call strip titles home. So don't freak out. I don't destroy my books. I saved them from the recycler. I'm going to start out by giving you an overview of what we'll be looking at for the next few weeks. This is the unread section of my collection, and as you can see there are books just piled in front of other books because I haven't quite figured out what I want to do with all of the ones I'm not sure I want to read yet. I was initially tempted to go down each bookcase starting at the top all the way to the bottom and do one bookcase per week and then moving up to the top shelves and spending a week on each one of those. But I think what I'm going to do is follow the same format I did with my red section and start in the upper right hand corner and take you across that entire row of top shelves. So we'll start just right up there and work my way all the way across and then the next week we'll start like the next shelf down and move over that way. So we'll do the first bookcases shelves first and then we'll move on to these upper shelves here. And I think this format will be fun for variety because on the left I have really high priority, next I have somewhat high priority, and then these two bookcases are medium priority, and then everything up here is low priority. So get a good variety of everything in each video. Let's get started. At the very top of my highest priority shelf here, I have some Joe Abercrombie's. Cannot wait to get to these. And then I've got his Young Adult series. Two of those books, Half a War and Half a King. I'm really hoping to get to those within the next couple of months, but by far the Age of Madness series is the highest priority for me. And then we have my Steven Erickson unread section. I need a little bit of a break from Malazan, not because it's been too dense, but because I have a whole bunch of other physical reads I'd like to get to. It seems like each book takes me about three months to read. I think I'll be starting a buddy read in April for House of Chains, the fourth book in the series. Then I have a couple of novellas in the Seven Swords series by Anthony Ryan, books two and three. This one's pretty cool. It's a signed copy inscribed to me, which I won in a giveaway from Anthony Ryan. It's where I got those book plates from him. I kind of geeked out at him, and, and he was gracious enough to send me those along with this arc that I won. That's high priority, too. I probably will save those for a challenge for novellas that I have coming up in February. Next, Where the Drowned Girls Go, book 7 in the Wayward Children series by Sheehan McGuire. Tor sent me this, and it caused me to start the series a little bit sooner than I had intended. But I can't wait to read this one. I'll probably do a full review on it once I finish it near the end of the month when it comes out. Book three in the Borderland series by Lorna Freeman. Mine doesn't have a cover. But this is one of those really cool hidden gem type of trilogies that I found. I really like the writing style. The character is reminiscent of Hobbes Fitz Chivalry. But the overall trajectory of these three books, the first one was great. The second one felt like a tangent. I've heard that this third one feels like a tangent as well. Nothing really gets wrapped up, and the author dropped off the face of the planet. So I'm not quite as excited to read it as I was before, but I know I'll at least enjoy the characters while I'm in with that. So I'm going to read that. Books two and three in the seventh Second Son series by Jennifer Fallon. I read the first one a couple of years ago and really quite liked it. And I'm probably going to have to do a reread of that one before continuing on. She's one of my favorite underappreciated authors, and 
I've said at nauseam how much I'd really like to get into more of her works. And yet, I don't have any plans to revisit that in my upcoming TBRs, per usual. Get excited about an author in front of an audience several times and then never make any actual plans to read them. Yeah, I do that a lot. Yeah, I have books 2, 3, and 4 of the Queen of Rinthia series by Sarah Beth Durst. I liked that first book. There were a couple of problems I had with it. It felt a little rushed and just a little juvenile, but there were some surprising things that happened that make me want to read on. But what really got me interested in putting this author as high priority is her Race the Sands book. It's a standalone. Absolutely loved it, so I figured I wanted to read more from this author. And I'm pretty sure I picked up all three of these on discount, so if I end up liking them, that'll be a huge score. Spine of the Dragon by Kevin J. Anderson. This author does a lot with a lot of the local writing communities that I've been involved with, but I've never tried any of his works. I've even had his old Hidden Empire series, at least the first couple of books on my shelves for a couple of years, and just haven't made time to try him. Especially with the second book for this one on the horizon, I'm kind of keeping an eye open for an opportunity to bump it up the TBR. In my Age of Five trilogy, there are three books in this. I feel like I should have read this series back when I was reading and loving The Magician's Guild by this author. Her writing seemed to really fit my tastes at the time, and I think I held off on this one because I was, quote, saving it for a rainy day, and that rainy day has come and gone, and I think my tastes in this author's writing style have diminished a little bit, but even so, it's been on my shelves for so long that I'm hopeful that I'll like it when I eventually get to it. Next, Orphans of Chaos by John C. Wright. It's a trilogy, and I have been hanging on to this one forever. It seems right up my alley. You know, kids with special abilities, I'm all over that. But the ratings on Goodreads are so low that if I were going on that alone, it would have been donated a long time ago. But I'm hopeful that this will be one of those weird series that works for me, but for no one else. We shall see. And we have my unread Anthony Ryan, Raven's Blade, the duology that came out after the initial Bloodsong trilogy. I have a really hard time diving back into a world when I thought the tale was over. And I loved Bloodsong, but I don't know if I liked the trilogy as a whole enough to go back and reread it to get ready for this. So if I go into it, it'll be kind of blind. And I hate that feeling of being slightly confused, like I should be remembering things, but I don't because my name retention in books is total crap. So I've been holding off on those and bumping them further back the priority list because I'm afraid I'm not going to enjoy them if I don't read them fresh. But generally, I really love the author. Next, Julie Chernita, author of some of my all-time favorite sci-fi novels, has a fantasy series, at least two books in it, Turn of Light, and I've been meaning to get to these for a while. Interestingly enough, I have this signed copy. It says, Where the Turtles? And I think I picked that up on a bargain site, and it just happened to come signed, which is ironic. But I love her writing style, and I love her world building, so I think seeing how she would tackle a high fantasy setting would be super fun. Next, I mentioned this in one of the red shelves. This is book two and three of The Age of Steam. It's like a steampunk Wild West. And I actually started this book, but then put it down because I got busy with other things. Really fun. Highly recommend if you're in the mood for something a little quirky. And then probably along those same lines, Bronze Gods by Anna Guire, The Apparatus Infernum series. I think there are two books in this series. This is the first one. It might be signed. Yep, I have a signed copy of this one. I think I won it in a giveaway. Anna Guire and I have a hit or miss relationship. The things that I love from her, I absolutely love. This is one of the two remaining series that I'm actually interested in reading from her. And it's one that I've been hanging on to unread because I know I'm probably going to like it, so it's nice to have a few like guaranteed reads on the shelves. 
I don't know much about this story except for it's kind of a murder mystery, but I'll tell you what, it's uh, probably a lot better than the self-published alien porn that she's coming out with these days. Jacqueline Carey, author of my one of my all-time favorite series, The Coo Shields, has an urban fantasy series. I've read her Agent of Hell trilogy, really liked that one, and I think this is the only thing I haven't read from her that I had intended to read from her. I've been hanging on to that one forever. Do you feel like you're getting a hodgepodge yet? Because I totally feel like I'm giving you a hodgepodge. Okay, The Tyranny of Night, book one in the Instrumentals of Night series by Glenn Cook. This is on my authors I really like to read list, but I'm probably more interested in his Black Company. I know a lot of the books I've been enjoying now were inspired by that series, but this is the only one I own. I picked it up on Bargain. And next we have the Smoke Thief series. I know it's about dragons, I know it's a romance, I know people who like romance have said that it's one of the best ones they've read, and unknowingly I picked up the YA Companion trilogy to this, and it's one of my all-time favorites. I think the first one's called Sweetest Dark, and it wasn't until the end of that one that I realized that they were tied in the same world or whatever. And the writing was so beautiful that I've been eager to pick this one up ever since. Well, relatively eager. It hasn't been read yet. There we go, and the lighting is so much better. Jennifer Roberson, who wrote the novels of Tiger and Dell, has another series called Caravans. Been mildly interested in that. Oh, and as I mentioned, Kevin J. Anderson's Hidden Empire. The premise of this one sounds so cool. They find aliens, like a whole alien society, which has been living in like one of our gas giants, probably Jupiter. And the idea that a planet like that can sustain life beyond our understanding, thought the concept was pretty cool. Now that I'm finishing up the Expanse series, this might be a good one to get into, but we'll see. I've heard mixed reviews on it, but I'd still like to try it one day. The Owl Trilogy by Mercedes Lackey and Larry Dixon. Of all the Lackey books, I don't know why this one is in my medium priority. Probably there by mistake. I have the other two somewhere else on my shelves, but I think of all the Lackey books I've not yet read, this one's kind of low on the priority list, so I'm probably going to move that one, actually. So you can see it again in another video. Julie Ternita came out with a short story compilation, Tales from Plexus, from her Thousand Words for Stranger world. She ran a competition for amateur writers to submit a story. And I just had too much going on at the time to submit one, but I really wish I'd had because being published would have been pretty darn cool. I'm skipping over the fact that I don't know if my writing quality is up to par with what they were looking for, but whatever. Then I have this awesome compilation of a cleric quintet by R.I. Salvatore. It's in the same realm as the Dritz books, and it's a spin-off series for some characters you meet in the Dritz books. The problem is, when you meet them, it tells you basically what happens in this entire quintet, and if I know anything about what's going to happen, I lose interest pretty quickly. But these are some awesome characters. I love Pykele. Just saying. Eventually, when I get caught up with the Dritz series, I'd like to revisit that one. The Legends 2. It's a compilation with some of the more popular fantasy authors. The only reason I have this is because there's a story in it by Elizabeth Hayden. Who wrote the Symphony of Ages series, and I would like to read that eventually. Same with all these, really. Jennifer Scales in the Ancient Furnace. It's got a really appealing cover. I wish I had found this when I was a teen. It's an ace fantasy. I've never heard anybody else having read it yet, but it's pretty short, actually. Maybe I'll put that on my TBR coming up soon. In fact, yay! Live action rearranging. I'm going to put that on my higher priority. Looks fun. I've mentioned these before. This is hilarious. This is called Touched by an Alien by Jeannie Coach. There's like 15 of these books out, and it's an urban fantasy. What drew me to it is the potential for aliens, because normally in urban fantasies you focus on the typical paranormal. So right off the bat, having an alien problem is really appealing. I'm hoping they're just being cheeky here and the romance aspect isn't quite that heavy but I'm not holding my breath. They are. 
And I have a few hodgepodge R.A. Salvatore. I've heard pretty good things of this. Oh, I didn't realize it was part of the Corona world. I've actually read a few in that world, so maybe I need to read these in between. This is the Saga of the First King, which I believe is what these ones are. And I have yet to read any of this, or I don't even know what these are about, but I figure when I run out of Dritz books, whoop, ooh, that's cool. I got book swag. Simtar's High. That is so cool. I wish one of my Dritz books said that. And look, the audio version. Nope, an interview. Holy cow, I didn't even know I had all of this. Anyway, maybe I should move that one up the list even more. It's one, this is one of those things where I'm collecting because I know I like the author, where I don't know anything about the books within, but yeah, this series is doing well for me because I'm finding a whole bunch of things I think I'd like to read sooner than later. Not that I don't have enough lined up as is. Hey, I've been looking for this one. It's book three in a series that's on a different shelf, so I'm going to add that over there and talk about those when we actually get to that point. Oh shoot. Same with these. A couple of self-published Lawrence Watt Evans. Holy crap. Um, look, I'm already making room. Okay, so Lawrence Watt Evans, one of my favorite writers. I really love his flowing storytelling. Something about the pacing of this one was just off for me. It had a really good premise, but I found myself not really caring what was happening. It may not be just a mood thing. It may actually be a problem with the text, but I'd like to go back and try it eventually. Due to some random bargain purchasing, I've managed to acquire a few books in the Phoenix series. Actually, it's called Enduring Flame by Mercedes Aki and James Mallory. I don't even know if I'm going to like these. Well, that's book three. Oh, look, I have book one. Go me. I tried their Outstretched Shadow book and lost interest about 30% of the way in. It's one of those, I can't tell if it was a mood thing or not, so I'd like to go back and retry. But, I don't know. Maybe this one will work better for me. In a series called Mad Kestrel by Misty Massey, I'm pretty much all for any kind of nautical fantasy. I really like that books that take place on the high seas tend to focus on the politics on the ships because frankly there's not a lot else going on usually. You can't get attacked by the Kraken every single day of the story. Yeah, it seems like an odd place to get that like high fantasy politics kick, but I found they work for me more often than not. Books two, three, and four in the Arion series. I did a review for this one. The first one started out okay for me, but then I just lost steam for it as the novels went on. You see, I liked this author enough at one point to invest in owning the actual non-stripped copies. So I might get curious eventually and move on with the series, but yeah, probably no time soon. It is nice that the print is actually a normal size, and it's a normal size book, so if I do venture in, it won't take me as long. Dragon time! So, got this little whoop, letter opener, which I don't have enough room on my desk to house him, so it basically is just a dust collector, but yeah, he's pretty cool. Got him at the Hallmark in our local mall before it closed down, like, 15 years ago. And we're coming to the end of this week's tour. So I have the Storm series by Mercedes Lackey. Mage Storms. And yes, at one point I liked this author enough to invest in owning the paperbacks and have yet to pick these up. She's another one who's incredibly hit or miss for me. It's a flip of a coin whether or not I'll like those. Then I have the third book in the Demon Apostle series. The original Corona Demon War Saga by R.A. Salvatore. It read very much like a classic fantasy to me and I had a lot of issues with pacing. So I got fed up with the second book, finished it, but by the skin of my teeth, and have yet to pick up this third one. 
I seem to have that patience problem with classic fantasy a lot, knowing that about myself, that it takes a specific mood to read them. I'm kind of setting for myself a loose classic fantasy reading challenge where I'll try to read one a quarter, and if it takes me the whole quarter to get through, daggum, I'm going to slowly work my way through all the classics. And Patricia Briggs, who is known for her Mercy Thompson Alpha Omega series, has a few high fantasy stuff. I tried the chapter or two from the book Masks and thought it was whoop, just okay. And here's the Hobbs Bargain. And then I have a couple of Raven series that... This one will probably be uh, the first spin-off that I try to read from her. Oh, you know, I read the Dragon Bone one as well and was a little bored with those, so we'll see. Mentioned in one of my shelfy tours, the Tinker series by Wen Spencer. Check out that cover. Yeah, this is another reason why this one is really hard to recommend. It's such a hodgepodge of things. It starts out as an urban fantasy and then starts to have high fantasy elements because there are elves. And then it goes to space and then they come out with covers like these. <laughs> So I tried to do a reread to make it to this one because it took so long to come out. And then I found out she was writing a fourth one and I didn't want to have to wait for that one. So I basically shelved the whole thing until all of the books are out and then I will get back to them and maybe do a reread to continue. But yeah, that's a gem. I'm being sarcastic because of the cover, but I'm also kind of serious because the story itself was pretty cool. And there you have it. This week's Sunday Shelfie. I hope you enjoyed this week's tour. Yeah, it's a little different from the Red Book section, where in some cases there's like one author per entire shelf, where in this case there are so many hodgepodge, like fewer titles from each author, so even though we're dealing with one fewer bookcase overall to go through each week, it still seems to be taking quite a while. And it's funny, with my Red section, I can speak to at least like how enjoyable each of the novels were and give you a few tidbits on it, whereas literally every book in this other section, it's like, well, I'd like to read that one day eventually. I've heard good things about it. A little different type of tour, but this is where you can actually help me. Uh, as you can see by me moving things around during the video, like the priority that I have set for these books is not set in stone. I move them around constantly. So if you saw anything on this tour that you think I need to make, a much higher priority than it is, please let me know. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time watching my videos, and I hope to catch you next week. Bye.